The program still this morning on ITV here, we'll be looking at the first talking point where, of course, the 2010 Electoral Amendment Bill is on the top burner. We expected Ms. President Muhammad Buhari to sign that into law, you know, but 30 days has elapsed yesterday, nothing has been done. Uh, to look at this I have with me, you all know him. <laughs> He's a presenter, now he's a guest. <laughs> <laughs> of course, our comrade, uh, Jideju. Very good morning and welcome. Good morning, Joseph. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Compliments. Yeah, <laughs> compliment too. Uh, quickly, the 2010 amendment, electoral amendment bill, uh, how does it appeal to you when uh, the president failed to sign it into law, you know, given the 30 days uh, prescribed by the law? Well, as I said, um, expect the unexpected. This mm. is the unexpected because uh, even though for the larger part of the month of um, November, December, a lot of people told me point blank that it, would not, it was not going to sign. Mm. Uh, and I debunked it. I said, no, he has no justification not to sign. Mm. They said, well, we will see. And, and I, I had a sleepless night. Mm. I had a sleepless night because... I feel that Buhari should be a statesman, not a politician. He's going to leave, whether he likes it or not, he's leaving in the less, less than two years. What legacy does he want to leave mm. behind? Exactly one year and five months. Yes. So what legacy does he want to leave behind? He was a, benef he was a beneficiary of an electoral reform in 2010 that was done by his predecessor. If his predecessor had been adamant and they, uh, you know, find a very clever way to, oh man, of, you see, now it's coming to fall. Why he didn't sign the 2018 one? There is not so much for those uh, clerical errors, uh, you know, and all of those excuses he gave. There was a high level of machinations not to sign. Four different times he refused to sign in 2018. The, I've never seen National Assembly bent backward. That was under Saraki. The Eighth National Assembly bent backward to accommodate all his thoughts. In February, they sent him the bill. He said uh, for three reasons that there are three clauses that um, was included, clause, controversial clause 25, where um, I, the National Assembly was dictating to INE that it should conduct election on over a three-day period and that election of National Assembly should start first, followed by that of the president, mm -hmm. followed by that of the governors and national and state house of assembly. Okay, we understood with him. Then the second time around June, they sent him the bill. He said, oh, you know, there are clerical errors, inconclusive, uh, you know, this, uh, there, there is um, a lot of, uh, um, uh, there, there, apart from clerical errors, there was something he also said. Mm -hmm. So he threw it back at them. They did, they did the third time. He said, you know, I'm still not satisfied, this, this, that, that, that. A lot of people were calling me, calling him out dead. I said, well, maybe he meant well for us. Eh, so let's not blame him. Uh, stuff and uh, Then the fourth time. In fact, by the time they did the fourth one, a uh, National Assembly invited Dianek, invited someone from the office of Attorney General. The three of them, tripartite meeting, they met and they decided to find two, taking on board all of his reservations. What did he give? He said it's too close to 2019 election. And that according to ECOWAS protocol. ECOWAS protocol that is just advisory. ECOWAS protocol is just advisory. It's not mandatory. That, okay, no country should review their legal framework for election six months to election. It was an advisory. President Goodluck Jonathan signed electoral amendment bill about a week to the election. The only bad thing about that, in 2015 I'm talking about, the only bad thing about that is that before it was gazetted and made public, elections have failed. So the benefits only came after the 2015 election. But here you are. You have people who have worked for three years assiduously on a piece of legislation. They have had retreats. They have 
had public hearings. Public presentation. They had a uh, benefit of even setting up a technical committee. Mm -hmm. This technical even committee. Even bent backwards when the. No, wait, I'm laying mm -hmm. the background. Mm -hmm. that when the technical committee even met, over the last three years, I'm telling you what has done, what has been done. The civil society organization called PLAC, Police and Legal Advocacy Center, was the secretariat for the technical committee of the National Assembly. First House Okoyech, National Chairman, National Commissioner, was the chairman of that technical committee. They met for several months. Uh, someone from the Office of Attorney General, someone from INEC, then uh, the members of the Joint Committee on, of uh, National Assembly on Electoral Reform. They went through with Cope, just cope. They went through, fine tune everything. Then, time to pass. The mistake, the first mistake I saw was why did the National Assembly itself decide to pass the piece of legislation the very week they were going on recess? That was what they did in, in, uh, in July. The very week they were going on recess on Thursday. They decided to table it for discussion on Wednesday and on Thursday. In fact, uh, I think the uh, Senate had to defer procession, procedure on recess to Friday to take uh, input from the NCC over their decision on whether uh, the, the controversial clause 52 sub 2. We talked about uh, if INEC is to deploy electronic transmission of his own, then it should first get mm. approval from NCC, from NCC mm. and then mm. ultimately from National Assembly mm. for the mm. Now, all of this, we, we put it aside. These people went on recess, came back in September. They, they set up conference committee. They invited INEC. INEC make a presentation. These are, these, are, these are areas we want you to touch. INEC make its own submission. They were, in fact, one thing that made me proud of National Assembly is that Senate vowed to public pressure. They recommitted the bill after mm. they have passed it in July. They recommitted it and passed that clause, controversial mm. clause mm. 52, for, to for be in tandem with that of us of reps. So we thought we were out of the wood because I was saying if the bill has been sent to the president the way it was passed in July, it was not going to sign. But here we are. The next thing we were hearing is controversial clause on direct primaries. Joe, my own position on direct primary has been that it's again needless controversy. We could have left section 87 of the Electoral Act 2010 the way it is which makes room for both direct and indirect primary. But you see, this whole face-off is all about personal interest and aggrandizement. How do you mean, sir? It is because if I will give you the, the underlining uh, undercurrent of all of this power play, if you listen to former governor of uh, Kirby State, Adam Aleru, he said, look, the reason why they have to insist on direct primary is because the so-called elective congress that have been held by APC at the world, local, and state government, state level, have been hijacked by the governors. And they have planted their own loyalists in all of those positions. And should they allow direct and indirect primaries, all they will do is they will go for, they will persuade the new uh, uh, National Working Committee to go for indirect primary. And if they go, you know the issue with delegates list, the super delegates and all of that. <coughs> the, the, the governor of... Uh, governor delegates of, uh, most times are people that, you know, that you can control. Hey, 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 <laughs> even wait. See, governor of uh, Niger says is mm. going to appoint additional 4,000 and something eight next year. The, all of these aides become automatic delegates when you want to go and do primary. Then uh, commissioners, then all of those board uh, appointees, uh, the maybe uh, head of uh, ministries, department, and agency in the state. And they said, look, let's have direct primary. I am of the opinion, consider view that 
the National Assembly overreach itself, should not have touched Section 87. Leave it the way it is. But having said that, okay, we are saying, even whether you do direct or indirect primary, mm -hmm. that is not where the problem lies. Mm -hmm. Where the problem lies is lack of internal democracy. Because, let me tell you, I wrote a piece in my column in the Punch newspaper two weeks ago, and I highlighted why this is just a storm in a, in a teacup. If you do direct, if you do indirect, it's not immune to manipulations and fraud. We saw how this same direct primary they were clamoring, National Assembly is clamoring for. Where how it has been done in Lagos, you you, you follow through ahead of 2019 to remove Ambody as the incumbent governor of Lagos State. They did a chua chua direct primary, which even the chairman of the committee that was sent from Abuja to go and do the uh, conduct the primary said they have not done primary yet, results were announced. The man went uh, 360 degrees the following day on his way to the airport to say that the, the primaries are being held. And that was how everybody was, was thrown into the train. You know? We saw in Anambra, this November 6 election that was held, they did direct primary in Anambra for APC. And Senator Andy Uba allegedly became the uh, candidate of the party. But he was said to have scored 320 something thousand votes. In the election on November 6, how many votes did he score? He scored 43,000. How come in a party election, internal party election, somebody scored 300 and something thousand and could not muster even 100,000 votes mm -hmm. in a general election? Mm -hmm. It tells you that the whole thing was, was orchestrated, was manipulated, was state managed. And that's why I'm saying, look, whether direct or indirect primary, it's not the problem of our party system. It's lack of credible nomination process and it starts from yeah but but with the direct primaries it will take care of all those challenges no no why direct primary i'm just, I'm just getting you i just gave you two examples now and but they they did direct primary did you take care of it uh november uh, in uh, anabra did you take care of it how how uh uba imagines the uh, candidate of apc Eh? The, the, the direct no, 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 the point I'm trying, I'm trying to, to raise here is the fact that it will take care of money politics during primaries. Because it, it has to... It won't. Because the same people that they do here of vote buying in Anambra last month, they will still pay these people, they will still give them money, there will still be money politics. It's just that what we go to each of the uh, the member who are going to vote would just be like 5,000, 10,000, you know, as they give to people during election. Mm -hmm. But if it were to be delegate system, eh, that's where you can hear of dollar rain, euro rain, mm -hmm. pounds rain, or naira rain. In which case, one person, if you are a delegate, you can smite on the bank on the following Monday, go and bank your money because somebody, if there are heavyweight candidate, uh, heavyweight aspirants, mm -hmm. so some could give you as much as uh, ten thousand uh, dollars to vote their candidate uh, for their candidacy, and somebody else will come up with seven thousand five. As was the, declared in Lagos, the, the indirect primary of uh, that brought in the president in 2014. Mm -hmm. If you go back and check in history, Google it. Naira Rain in Lagos. Kwakwanso was there. Saraki was a contestant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. President Atiku Abuaka. Atiku, yes. There were five of them contested. And if you see the headlines, the following Sunday, the Sunday after the primary on Saturday, there's another rain or dollar rain. The same thing happened in Port Harcourt, in PDP primary. Mm -hmm. Dollar rain. Because where you have every weight, it will be for the highest bidder. But what the red primary mm -hmm. will just do is that because now this is an election in which only party members will uh, be the voter. Then card carrying member. Card carrying member. Oh, that's why I said member. If you are not card carrying, <laughs> you cannot be a member. So, in that event, because the number is huge, you may not be able to give them as much. But that is, um, I'm only saying, let me tell you where the pressure points are in the value chain of the nomination value chain. 
because we are just peeling uh, here over nothing. We, if, we, if the president says, go and put direct primary and indirect primary, it's still going to be manipulated. Because, the, let me tell you how it's done. First, nomination fee. <coughs> Somebody will fix, fix the nomination fee. For AKT and Oshu governorship election, APC has fixed 22.5 million naira for, for nomination fee. 22.5 mil, 22.5 million mm. million naira. I don't know how much you built your house. Whether you spent that much as of that time, but even with today's inflation rate, Joe, at least you can have a modest bungalow. A modest bungalow. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if not a duplex. If not a duplex, <laughs> twenty-two point, and that's what you pay for nomination fee. Meanwhile, this nomination fee is not refundable. So you have about 50, 25 people buying for the they will buy the form. Now, th this is the first the, 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 the first take the nomination. The second point where they skin people out is when they say come and face screening panel. Then you go face screening panel and say, Mr. Jokadiri. Uh sorry, we will not be able to validate your nomination because we we suspected you to be involved in antipathy. What is antipathy now? Got because to do you are mm -hmm. you have a you attended wedding of a, a, a political mm -hmm. opponent. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you are schoolmates. Mm -hmm. Then you went to our daughter's wedding. Mm -hmm. They said, yeah, mm -hmm. you, you and, are, and, you and then you are, you are asked to wait for the reception. Uh, uh, hey. So <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are involved in antipathy. Or they will say, the spelling of your name, they spelled it Joe and not Joseph. So you are not the same person mm -hmm. and all of that. They come up with all manner of shenanigans because they want to weed you out. You know, and they have collected 22.5 million naira from you. Mm -hmm. So, but that, that, but that, in fact, the screening should have be at the point of that payment. Uh, yes, to say mm -hmm. the only you people who have been screened should mm -hmm. go and pay. But because they are looking for money, they will get you to buy the nomination form. Then they will say, come for screening. When you have been screened out, as was the case of Obaseki mm -hmm. in uh, Edo mm -hmm. State last year, mm -hmm. as was the case of uh, Umeoji, uh, Chukuma Umeoji in Abga in this year's uh, governorship election in Abga, mm -hmm. then you, you now say go to appeal committee. Who, is, who are members of this screening and uh, appeal committee? They are still the same people who have been put it together to perform a naked job. So when you go to the appeal committee, they uphold the, 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 the decision the, of the, the electoral decision committee. Of the electoral committee. That is the second point. Then you come to the you come to the actual uh, uh, primary. They will tell you the primary will be held at uh, Ogbemudia Stadium by 10 a.m. You get there, they have not even put anything in place. The place is still under lock and key. Mm -hmm. So it is around 4 p.m. you start seeing people. The whole primary will not start until midnight. And in some instances, they can even postpone it without re re informing mm -hmm. all the aspirants. Or even change the venue. Or the change the venue, venue. as the case in Delta <laughs> State, where Patsy told me, who paid the million, <laughs> could not even assess where the primary was going to hold. So, Look at all of that. Then when it look, comes look before to he even left Lagos to to <laughs> Delta, they they are doctors. <laughs> they are, they are, they, he was asking, where is the primary? <laughs> 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 they have been, they have concluded. They have concluded. <laughs> so that is it. Oh, that is the primary we are talking about. It's not about direct or indirect. But look at that. Then you 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 even you even say, oh, you have succeeded. You have won the primary. They said, don't be too sure. <laughs> then, uh, when it is time to fill form 001F, uh, the INEC form, uh, you have they filled your name. Then uh, maybe along the line, they said, look, uh, your your candidacy has K leg because we found out that you are not electable. <laughs> and then they put for somebody else's name. By the time you are fighting all of this, the election may have failed. Mm -hmm. But if we, if they after, don't after do the election, that, you don't go to court. Even if, if they didn't do that for you, mm -hmm. and eventually look at the orders, oh, we have looked at about three mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. Now, did you know that even if your name was sent to INEC, it's not the final word, because there is a window 
made available by the Electoral Act mm, for, for the, substitution of candidates. Mm, by the party chairman. But, but, no, for substitution. And mm. what that means is that in the event mm. that uh, the candidates who had earlier been nominated decide mm. to withdraw his nomination, mm. yeah, you that person can be substituted. Or in the event of death of okay. the... Okay, of uh, let, let me hold your thought there. Uh, we have been joined uh, via the phone by Ezenwa Wogu. He also uh, give us his, uh, his view concerning uh, the position of the president not to sign the 2010 Electoral Amendment Act. Very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? Uh, we are fine. Merry Christmas in advance. Thank you. Yeah, so quickly, let's get your opinion concerning the position of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. I think um, first is that uh, there is a disappointment uh, in the investment that has that has been uh, put into amending the electoral act. Even though uh, to the, the electoral act is the most amended piece of legislation in, the, in, in this uh, democratic uh, experience that we're having. Every legislative um, period, uh, there is there is some kind of tinkering. But what uh, was important for this was that um, it was one uh, experience in which everything was thrown to make sure that we don't get to this sorry past that uh, we are now. And one of the things that we suggested at that time was to embed. Um, embed the Ministry of uh, Justice and Attorney General in the whole gamut of um, the legislative uh, treadmill so that at the end of the day, since it is the, um, the, the Attorney General that advises the President ultimately on the issues of uh, laws and bills uh, that will be able to uh, jump over uh, the challenge that we currently have. But what has happened uh, is that um, we have placed politics above reforms. Um, politics is because for the first time again, there is a unanimity of evil, if you, if you want to permit that, mm. in the sense that both the, the dominant and the opposing political party uh, agreed on one aspect of uh, the law that the uh, citizens uh, uh, the, the desire of citizens for a direct primaries in political parties that will open up the space uh, it has been subverted. And so the president has, has, has played his role, not as a former president who wants legacy. Mm. Uh, he, he has taken to support uh, politics, the politics of expediency, of uh, leadership recruitment in political parties than signing the people of Nigeria who want this democratic space expanded, inclusive and equitable uh, for, for for everyone. That's that's what my quick take on that has been. Yeah, so we, we have taken quite a lot from uh, your friend Jide Ujo here. Uh, he believed that the president uh, would have written his name in diamond, so to speak, if he actually you know, accented to, to, to that bill. Now, uh, could we say that um, those that are supposed to advise him didn't advise him in the right direction? Because we know that the president... Joe, I said the president plays politics again above reform. Mm -hmm. And I told you that when this whole process started, we worked to ensure that the there is a multi-stakeholder uh, approach to mm. the issue of that electoral reform, bringing the electoral management body, putting them in the forefront of uh, those the, the, that challenge. Civil society, uh, GD, and all of us, we are all throwing in everything to make sure that um, we have. But there are sunshine issues, but the, the clock, like I told you, is the issue of direct or indirect primary. Mm -hmm. That that is the political, and that is the one that has united the the the, the, the politicians mm -hmm. of our country, irrespective mm -hmm. of their parties. Mm -hmm. So it's not just it's okay to 
a singular president because ultimately the book stops with him. But like you know, he's not a priest, he's a, he's a politician. Mm. And uh, the, the chief executive of states uh, uh, who want to continue to hold the the party structures and administration mm. in their states and in the country are breathing on his neck. The National Assembly are also fighting, not altruistically, mm. they are fighting for their own survival because the many of them, especially in the Senate, many of them who are sitting in that Senate today are governors who themselves have pushed the same structures they, they are trying to liberate because Nigerian people want it. So we, we, are in a, we are in a fix in the sense that as far as politicians are united over a matter, we need to up the game in terms of our advocacy, in terms of our capacity to lobby, and our engagement with the different stakeholders to be able to come to that point where we agree that we should place reform above politics. Okay, now let me uh, quickly take um, uh, your friend Gide Ojo on this. Uh, uh, Mr. Gide Ojo, do you see the National Assembly vetoing this, this bill? Well, that, that's what is, uh, what is purportedly afloat that uh, the National Assembly deliberately did not pass the budget last week mm. because they want to trade the passage of the budget for the signing of the electoral law, mm. uh, electoral bill, and that um, they were prepared that in the event that the President did not sign, mm. as it turned out he, he hasn't signed, they were going to override his veto. Mm. But that we wait to see. Because now the governor's forum, which is spearheading the do not sign mm. uh, struggle for the president and the leadership of the National Assembly, both of them are, are you know, digging deep in their trenches. Mm. And we want to see whether truly uh, the, the National Assembly we today, as has been speculated in the mm. media, uh, be able to override the president's veto. Mm. It's, it's been done before. Recall that in year 2000, on June 7, 2000, uh, during the presidency of Olusha Mabasanjo, uh, over the NDDC bill, uh, the National Assembly at that time actually uh, overrode the uh, president's uh, veto. Mm. And whether this will happen, mm. my fear is that why it may happen in the House of Reps. Mm. Uh, it's too cold. The, 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 the body language of the president of the Senate mm. uh, that uh, they will still support the president uh, it, it leaves much to be desired because mm. it then happens that while the House of Reps may go ahead and uh, mobilize to thought uh, to override the president, but to uh, Ahmed Lawan as the president of the Senate may want to throw a different line. Mm. And where there are, we, we, we run a bicameral legislature. Mm. If one house uh, decides to override the president, mm. and the other did not follow suit, mm. then the whole exercise is mm. defeated. Mm. And what is most painful to me is the investment, mm. time, money, and even trust that has been invested in this. Because the president led everybody by the nose, believing. In fact, after the passage on November 9th, uh, before the clean copy was sent to him on the 19th, mm. uh, the leadership of the, uh, uh, the National Assembly went to him. And they did come out to tell us that the president said he's waiting for the bill so that he could sign. So what has changed? And why is the president waiting till the last minute, last day, after 30 days expiration, to now be writing the National Assembly about his reservation. You could have done this two weeks ago because from what we learned, mm. both the House of both the INEC mm. and the and the uh, the Attorney General Minister of Justice mm. have communicated their their positions to him. And if he meant well, he could have taken the middle step after that mm. to write to the National Assembly. He does not have to wait the entire thirty days. He doesn't have to wait out mm. to now make that commitment. Because as we see, the National Assembly is heading for Christmas break. Mm, they just have one more sitting. One, one more sitting and they are, they are going to So, but they have said that they will not pass the appropriation bill if the president does not sign. But 
what, what we know constitutionally is that 30 days, after the 30 days expiration, you can now something, mobilize. something has yeah. to give way. Okay, so uh, back to you, uh, Mr. Izenwa. Is Let's get uh, what you expect from National Assembly. I don't expect anything from the National Assembly. Hmm. Why? The, the reality is that he, he, until we come to terms with the fact that we cannot place store on 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 people who the antecedents does not support progressive struggles. Judy uh, was talking about a, a, a house of rep that will be probably more revolutionary in engaging this issue, but the history does not support that. Uh, there will be some grandstanding uh, of, by some individuals in the both in both the House of Rep and in the Senate. But ultimately, if the politics that we have seen in the, in the last twenty you know, there about years of our democratic experience mm. shows the unhealthy, unwieldy, you know, grip of of the executive on on, on the legislature um at, at the end of the day because you have a transactional national assembly uh, that 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 is in business with the, the executive the there is always something to hold them down on the bigger thing to do will be unfortunately for us we have sliding into holiday mode it will have been to begin to put put the pressure on the national assembly and the legislature and the executive to come to a point in which those issues that are important to us as as nigerians can be put back strongly on the front burner uh, so but if it is about um, whether you have a national assembly that will suddenly become a tiger that's that's not going to happen um, whether it's in the Senate or in the House of Rep, the majority of the people who are there will will make will will beat the drum in the bush and come out outside and ask who is beating the drum. That is what we know. So I have no, as we speak now, I am I am not in a position to to put my mind on what any National Assembly will be doing. I am more interested in what we will be doing in the face of the assault on our investment of time resource energy to ensure that first and foremost that we have a clean free fair acceptable uh, electoral process uh, so if, if there is an attack on it let us see it as a collective attack of the political class mm. uh, rather than isolate one and give the other essentially uh, complexion in and then pretend that the other one is the devil what has happened is that there is a conspiracy against the Nigerian people mm. by the political class. And that is why I tell you that the PDP and APC, for the first time in a long time, mm. are agreed on one thing. And the Governor's Forum, uh, who themselves are looking to go to the National Assembly, and the ones, most of them in the National Assembly, looking to be governors, are conspiring against free, fair, credible elections. Mm. There is not any part, any political, uh, you know, category in Nigeria that is truly in the conversation for free, fair, and acceptable election. Now, and I'll tell you why. If 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 uh, you think the National Assembly is doing what they are doing, it's simply because the attrition level in the National Assembly is really is, has been low since 1999, mm -hmm. and they hold the chief executive of state is responsible for that. But whichever uh, mode of candidate election that you you decide is open to manipulation and so they shouldn't have used this direct or indirect issue to affect the, the broader sunshine you know uh reforms that have taken place in this in this current amendment and that that for me is my frustration and my pain all right thank you so much uh is there for your time with us on the program i appreciate it. thank you thank you so much all right so uh back to to you now <coughs> Uh, as we speak now, uh, what is the remedy? Oh, well, the remedy, obviously, uh, the remedy will have been to for the necessary controversy, necessary uh, clauses of the 
uh, constitution to be invoked. Um, but we in the civil society and media are not too optimistic about that happening. Mm. Just like my brother is in one word said. So the other remedy would be to flow with whatever the president's uh, communication would be. Mm. Which may be, okay, um, this clauses, this clauses, this clauses, please uh, have a look at it, have a second look at it, and then pass it expeditiously and I will sign. Mm. Which then means that the governors have won. The governor's forum are the ones that have openly come out and said, look, we will not allow this to fly. So it has shown the, the supremacy of the executive over the legislative. Do you, do you get it? Mm -hmm. And that's what they are flexing muscles over. Because the, 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 there was no eating agenda that the governor's forum has reached out to Malami, made full well that every piece of legislation that is passed by the National Assembly will be referred to it, that office, by the President for legal opinion. Mm -hmm. It is sacrosanct. Every law goes the OGF must, the OGF must, must say. They say, what is your legal opinion on this? And you know, something very unique, very, very uh, interesting, which, which uh, goes to show the power of the executive in the presidential system of government. We, at the level of media and civil society, have said, look, Mr. President, whatever reservation you have about this bill, we, you are entitled to your reservation. But sign and let us sponsor an amendment. Which is 100% possible. It is a win-win situation. That is what he did on the uh, Petroleum Industry Act. He signed the Petroleum Industry Act in spite of the reservation people had about that law. And 36 days after, he sent the same bill for, uh, for amendment. And we have said that, look, if, it's this, if this is all about direct indirect primary, please sign and then sponsor an amendment so that I make, you know, the, what we have not talked about, Joe, is the implication of what the president has done on 2023 election. It's very good. Because if you are signed and you know that this, if, if he had invited the National Assembly member and said, look, I have a vision about this. I'm communicating this to you informally. But I will sign, but I want you to also act in good faith to make sure that the necessary amendment is passed. Do you get it? It's going to be a win-win situation. That is conflict resolution. So, you sign, IMAX begins preparation in yes. earnest mm -hmm. for 2023. Uh, we need to procure electronic voting machine. We need to procure electronic uh, mm -hmm. results mm -hmm. transmission. We need to know the areas that we know. have good reception. So, so in terms they, of, they start doing those uh, mapping, so those planning, those, you know, resource management, how, do, how much do we mean to do this, do that. But as it is now, 2023 legal framework is still again in the balance. And because failure to, what, you know, if, if, if the president wanted to act in good faith, when he received that communication on, on November 19, at least he has a vice president who is also a professor of law. Mm. The two of them can sit together. They are the presidency. And, isn't and, then, and then he has many lawyers in his cabinet. Uh, yes. And, 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 exactly. You know? and, and come together from a small other committee, sitting, listen to their opinion, and say, look, I want to do this. I'm not going to wait on Malami alone. Malami is going to be a formality. After all, whatever Malami says will not be made public. So, Ashibadjo, you are a professor of law. You are also a senior advocate of Nigeria. What do you think? Are, are you getting me? So, in that first week, they already have an idea of where to go. If it is to return the bill, they can do that within that first week. You don't have to wait 30 days. 
Then you, you just say, my brother's the National Assembly, President of the Senate, Speaker Komu, I've sounded my legal team. I've sounded them out on this. This thing will not fly. I'm going to formally inform you tomorrow, my reservation. Work expeditiously on this. We have seen bills, Joe, we have seen bills passed in two weeks. The, the uh, new minimum wage bill, go and check. It was passed by House of Reps in two weeks. From A to Z. This 30,000 minimum wage bill, it was only the Senate that delayed till after the election. Do you know that public hearing is not mandatory? So, so what the president could have done if he wanted to act in good faith is that look, I have reservation about this. Like, give INEC one week to come back with, give uh, the, the Atojaya one week, then have a small kitchen cabinet. Uh, Kayamu, uh, Shibajo, who else is there that is a lawyer? After that, mm -hmm. uh, even national mm -hmm. legal mm -hmm. advisor. Mm -hmm. Three or four of them. Let them advise you. But there are many of them. Many of them. Even Gosu Lagbabu is a lawyer. He is a lawyer. So, 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 so you just have five yeah. of them on two hours of your Saturday or Sunday. You listen to them. This is how statesmen work. What the president has done is he has turned is honor in the public yeah, but the, 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 let's, let's uh, wait to see what his communication to the National Assembly will be. It may be something that will somehow not what, decide about. What, what, whatever his communication is, mm. we are racing against time. Mm. We are racing against time because by the time these people, do you know that the president now we have a bigger task with him? By the time the, the president of Senate has said that they want to return Nigeria to January to December uh, appropriation uh, financial year. So today is already 28th. They have not passed the appropriation bill. If they pass it today or tomorrow, the presidents will still have to give it to NDAs to have a look before we will sign. It may well sign at 11.59 on December 31st. The most important thing is that signature. But what I'm saying is that this comes first because this is about stabilizing Nigeria. This is about when, when you see if this bill does not fly as the 2018 episode did not go well, you will see a level of voter party in 2023 because people will just say it's just an only ritual. What else will change? Is it not the same way we have been doing the election? This piece of legislation is supposed to transform the entire value chain of our electoral process. Now we have killed it. Because what it will mean is that whatever the communication of the president to the National Assembly, they will say, okay, we will work on it. And they will sleep on it. They will kill it in view. March, they will not pass. April, you will still national we, we will not be back to uh operation occupying us by the time they pass it may be march or april next year and then it moves to election and there is a provision for what i learned in that bill that says that uh, uh party primary should be conducted six months to election Six months to election. So how do you want to activate that? If you are not, can you achieve that? I, I can you achieve that? So this no passage at this time will have a relaxed ripple effect on so many other part of it. Because like I told you, what about procurement? I don't want to do uh, electronic transfer of results. They need to buy the necessary equipment, and many of these equipment are not manufactured in Nigeria. They are manufactured abroad. They yeah. even if they are manufactured here, you know the way our test is. We want to go, to go and buy from oh, really? foreign countries. Oh, oh, oh. So, so then you need to do cost. You need to get a BP, BPP certification, you know, Bureau of Public Procurement, to say that yes, you can buy this equipment at this unit price. 
You know, the IHM answered something in 2019 when they postponed the election at the door of the day of commencement of the election. He said, Look, this small handheld device called Smart Carrier, that it takes the commission six months to procure it. Six months. That's even when you have the money. Six months to procure small, small handheld. So, how then do you procure an uh, electronic voting machine for 2023 if the law that backs you up to do the procurement is not even available? So, so many things will be affected, but beyond and above, uh, beyond and above that is the, um, the social cost, the lack of trust that young people will have in the electoral process. But is it difficult for the National Assembly to mobilize to turn? It's not, but they will not do it because of their own self-interest. They want to come back. Let me, let me, let me play a bit of uh, devil's advocate on the rationale behind this thing that they did. See, uh, National Assembly, particularly Senate, has a number of former governors. Mm, about 27 of them. 27 of them, God bless you. About 22 I mean, ABC is in control of 22 states. And PDP maybe 11, after one. Now, when you do the tally, those who are second-time governor and those who are first-time governor, you find that, that over two-thirds of the governors are on their second term. And they are thinking of coming to the Senate. Meanwhile, those who are descending do not want to retire because they, are, they believe that it's their retirement benefit. So, somebody like, look at Benway, at some point, the two former governor of Benway states, why the national, the right now, uh, you, you have the immediate past governor there uh, as a senator. No, no, Susan is there. So, uh, Susan is there. At some point, I think Barabas Gemade was there. Yeah, Barabas Gemade and. Um, <coughs> And uh, Akume, and, uh, Akume. Now, Akume has come to become Minister of uh, uh, Special Duties. If you look at uh, Kano, at some point, Shekarao and uh, this mm. chairman of finance on uh, uh, Kabuga, uh, Kabuga. Uh, are both and now we have both Kabuga and Shekarao. Uh, Shekara. so, so you can and see, Kabuga wanted to come. So these are the power play that these governments who are serving at the second time. Mm. Are high coming to National Assembly. So when APC had these congresses from what to local government to state, they already have populated this with their own loyalists. Making sure that all those retired governors who are in the National Assembly <laughs> when they are the they fight they, they put them out so that they can come in. And that is the power play. But I am saying National Assembly played it the wrong way. Because whether you do direct primary or you do indirect primary, it is still part of manipulation. And the greatest fear they had about this direct primary, let me tell you, the truth is that 18 registered political parties in Nigeria, I tell you for free, none of them can claim to have credible membership register. Why is that? They don't have. They don't, don't have. Which of them can tell you this is exactly the number of our members? And can publish the list no, of I think APC can do so. Oh, well, you think so? Mm -hmm. Oh, you think so? Because they did the registration and revalidation <laughs> this year. Let them come out. Let them come out the same way I know will come out and paste names of uh, potential voters mm -hmm. uh, and ask people to do claims and objection. Uh, claims and objection. What I'm saying is that since the APC concluded that the, the registration of members, have they published the names for claims and objection? Have people not died? Those, those who died, if they are going to do primaries tomorrow, would they not vote? I don't know whether, because the, 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 the credibility of the register is not in the availability. It is in whether it can stand integrity test. People who have jumped ship, who have moved from APC to PDP, people who have died, people who have resigned their membership of the party, like, let me call, like a director of the church said, he's going to be Will you not still find those names there? 
That is even you are talking of APC. Assuming we don't consider APC even mm -hmm. have a credible membership link, membership register. What about the 70 others, including PDP? PDP have wanted to do registration for how many years now? They have not been able to get it off. The controversy over uh, Prince Uche Sekundus and all of that. The way them, they wanted to do like uh, APCD. So, when you vote for credible members, how do you do direct primary? Who will be coming to vote? I don't know whether you get that. That's the dilemma of direct primary. It is due to manipulations because none of the HM Register political party can link them to a credible membership register that can stand integrity, that people can, they can paste across their work, local government, state offices, and people will go and say, this is my name, but this person has died, they will remove the name of that list. This person is no longer a member of our party, he has since joined the uh, PAC, remove his name. Do you understand? So, you, none of them have an organic and credible membership register. So that is the dilemma where even IPAC, Interparty Advisory Council, immediately National Assembly passed that legislation, they kicked against it, that they were not in support of direct primary. But indirect primary is even more prone to corruption because within direct primary you talk of delegate system. And the delegate system it's great. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's the highest bidder. Oh, so, <laughs> so these are the these are the dilemma. But mm. ultimately, mm. it is so disheartening that our we are elevating politics over governance. Mm. We are elevating politics and political expediency over what will benefit. Because this is all about our leadership recruitment process. It's about leadership recruitment. Once, once you fail to get your elections right, any other things will go up with up. Because it is when you recruit good leaders into a position, that and how do, you get, how do you get good leaders when they come and shoot themselves into office, when they, 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 they manipulate the process, when they put people that the rest to declare them winner, when they buy their way, way into office, how will you say this leader is credible and will do the bidding of the people. So this is a this has a ripple effect. And how do you inspire confidence of Nigerian youth to join the electoral process by even joining political parties, by standing for election, and by coming out to vote during elections? Because they will tell you, Daddy, is the same or same. I mean, I can't waste my time. The, the outcome is already predictable. And that is not right. That is one thing we, we ought to have gotten. No matter what we do now, the only remedy that I feel we can do is if the National Assembly can expeditiously uh, take on whatever reservation they Or can. they can, uh, it's not even possible for them not to go on recess. Not to go on recess. But they can delay going on recess. After all, Christmas is on Saturday. <laughs> they can delay going on recess. And we say election is just by the corner. And you know, if you don't go to your kinsmen by this week, other political... Uh, you, you know, can't can go, go by Thursday, you can go by Friday. See your kinsmen, and people are coming and they are late. Wait. They are out of fellowship. They are out of fellowship. They are already calling them. They are already calling them. They are already calling them. They are, they, are, they are already calling them. Uh, they are uh, waiting for you. We have not seen the. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. The okay. okay. good is you will be sent to them. So let them do this national honor, national assembly. Even if they have to wait one extra days, two extra days, and it will gladden my heart if they can override the president veto. It will get because they will be able to redeem their image in the public eye that oh, we are no rubber stamp national assembly, but. Will that happen? It, well, it will, let's, let's, tomorrow now we'll get to know uh, the position of the National Assembly. And because uh, ITV will be there to bring you all that will happen tomorrow. We're sure that will be the major issue that will be discussed in both chambers. Thank you so very much, uh, Comrade Professor.
the day the operator time. My pleasure, mm -hmm. Joseph. Thank you so much. So we'll take a big break. When we come back, uh, Dominic AMS will be here and we'll be looking at other issues.